Today I want to talk about origins. If you've used GameMaker, you're no doubt familiar with the sprite's origin, but there's some cool tricks you can do when you move the origin of a sprite around inside of a sequence. So to set this up, we only need one sprite. So this graphic here of this character with their arms up over their head. The newly created sequence completely blank. I'm going to take the sprite and we're going to add it into the track panel. We want this to appear for all 60 frames. So we're going to drag that out. Scrub playhead through. It appears for all 60 frames. Notice that when we took the sprite and put it into the track panel, this sprite appeared at the center of the sequence. And that's because it lines up with the origin of our sprite. That our origin is right in the center, right kind of at its chest level here. And that's where it spawned in here. And why origins are important, because if we want to see the sprite rotate or scale, it moves from the origin as a pivot point. So let me show you what I mean. Let's add a parameter for a rotation. At frame zero, we'd like to keyframe that at zero degrees. I'm going to go over to 60. And actually, if you want two full turns, you can add multiples of 360. So we want it to make two full turns. So we're going to 720 degrees. And we're going to make sure it's keyframed. So as you run the animation through, you can see that character does two complete spins counterclockwise right at, its, right at its origin. It's as if you took a pin and you stack it right to his chest and you flick the end of it, kind of like a spinner on a board game. Now, something that's different about this is the origin makes the animation different depending on where that pivot point is. So if I were to play this animation in the game, you might think that this character is maybe falling down a hole or being launched into outer space. This might be an appropriate animation for that because there's the character spinning around their very center. Now let me take, let me move the origin and let's see how uh, this changes our animation here. So we're going to use something in our toolbar actually. So we're going to click on the sprite. I'm going to make sure that gizmos are enabled by clicking the little wrench icon, which toggles our gizmos. And here we've got different uh, transform gizmo modes. So we can put it into move mode with the arrow. We can put it into scale mode. We can put it into rotation mode. Or we can click on this one. It looks like a little target here. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to our origin point do it wherever we want. And now I'm going to move it in between his hands. So now this creates a new pivot point here, right? And it's going to rotate around that center. So as I toggle through the animation, and push play, check that out. He's rotating around the pivot point that's in between his hands. Now this looks like he's being, it doesn't look like he's falling or being launched into outer space. It looks like he's holding on to something. It looks like he's holding on to my mouse right now. He's spinning around that. Might be useful if you have like a peg in a wall or something like that. Pretty cool, right? Let's pause the animation, go back, and let's move the origin point one more time. And we're going to move it around his, play the animation, see what that looks like. That's very different too, right? It almost looks like there's a something holding onto his feet and is spinning around in circles, almost like Mario does to Bowser in Mario 64, right? And this is all done with the same sprite, and the sprite's origin is still at the center. We're not changing sprites properties, we're changing where the origin is for this track layer in the sequence. So depending on where the origin is, you get, you've got lots of different um, options of animation. You can either have, him, have it in the center and have him spinning or falling. You can have it at, in between his hands and he's swinging from a pole or around a tack. Or you can put it at his feet and have him being swung around. And the only thing that we've changed in these three examples, the origin point. Now, something good to note, notice that when we moved the origin point, it created a keyframe for its position at the same coordinates of the origin. It did that for good reason. So when we move our origin here on frame zero, notice how the position changes with the origin. That's for the IDE and that's for our own convenience. If they didn't have the position change here, it would move 
Oh, good. It would move the sprite so that the origin's always at zero, zero, and it would shift our sprite over and up or over and down or however it would be, however it would need to be to offset this point from zero. So the Game Maker IDE does us a great favor of keeping our animations put while we're adjusting origin point so that the sprite's not shifting around and we can keep our animations intact. So we've learned how to move the origin around a track layer. Um, but notice that it's a parameter here, and that means we can keyframe it. You might be wondering, what's the point of keyframing an origin if we just want to show one animation with one purpose? Well, that's because you might have situations where the, you want the, the track to look different during an animation, depending on uh, the action of your layer here. So let's say we wanted him to swing up by his feet, grab a peg up here, and then swing around that point. So it's two different points that he's pivoting around in the same animation. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing we're going to do is keyframe the origin at his feet. So I'm going to select the origin point gizmo transform. I'm going to put it at his feet. Just like we mentioned before, it changes the position here. So right now this looks like he's spinning around at his feet for the 60 frames. At 30 frames, we're going to move the origin in between his hands at that peg. Notice that the origin um, has a keyframe now, and the position has a keyframe, and that's what we were talking about before. The IDE does us a favor by not shifting this track during our animation. But if we play that animation, something interesting happens. So notice that the origin point is moving along with the position. You can see the origin point moving upwards, and the position is actually moving upwards to meet that origin point, so that when we get to this point, the origin point is at in between his hands, and down here, the origin point is at his feet. So it's what we call tweening between these two keyframes, because it's showing the animation in between these two points. This isn't necessarily the effect that we want to give, although it's interesting. If we were to play that, you kind of have this, <laughs> this offset gravity spinning kind of effect, which is interesting in itself, but not the, not the effect that we want. So we're going to use a new um, function here. We're going to right click on the keyframe and we're going to go to stretch parameter key. What this does is it allows us to move from this point to this point without showing any of the in-between frames. It's not going to automatically interpolate between the two keyframes. So let's keep our eyes on the origin here, which is at our character's feet. It's always at the character's feet. Now we still have that strange effect. You notice where the character starts at the top and kind of teleports down below. That's because we need to do this stretch the keyframe of our position as well. We don't want the position to change. The only thing we want to affect is the rotation because we're spinning it around its origin. So we're going to right click on here and go to stretch parameter key for the position. And notice it only stretches it, shown by the dotted lines, up until the next keyframe, both for the origin and the position. Let's scrub through, and you can see that, look, it's staying still and just pivoting around the feet. Then when we get to this point, the origin and the position snap so that it shows the, the sprite layer not actually moving up or down, but it's actually moving the origin in between his hands. Watch the origin as, is at his feet, at his feet, 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 hands. It snaps right there. So we told the origin to always stay at its feet up until that point, and the position to keep its relative position to that origin up until this point. And then from here, now that we have the origin still here, position can stay as is, spins along the top. So we have this animation where it rotates around his feet, he grabs the peg up top, and it continues to spin and pivot around that point. You can see that just like any other parameter, whether it's rotation, position, scale, we can actually ch uh, change and animate the point of the, or the origin in the track panel through the sequence animation. We have an animation that looks something like that, which is very interesting as well.